The last time Motorola made a high performance smartphone was four years ago. And back then I didn't just have more hair, I had plenty of optimism about the future of Motorola's flagships. And then they stopped making them for four years. Now Motorola is back with this, the new Motorola Edge Plus, and on paper it has everything it needs to take on the best the industry has to offer. After a week of testing though, Motorola's latest flagship kind of feels like a thousand dollar mixed bag. Now, normally when I shoot these review videos, I have a little flow that I like to stick to. I start with design and display and eventually move into weightier subjects like performance. That's not gonna work this time. Motorola flat out told me that the entire phone was designed around this so-called endless edge display, so we're gonna have to spend a lot of time talking about it. Let's tackle some of the other subjects first. If speed and power are among your biggest concerns, the Edge Plus has you covered. Like most of the other flagships we've tested this year, this thing uses a Snapdragon 865 chipset with 12 gigs of LPDDR5 RAM, which, yes, means it's as fast as every other $1,000 phone I've tested so far. No matter what you want to use it for, the Edge Plus has the power to do it. We've gotten to the point where this kind of sheer speed is almost a given, so because of that, other factors have taken on much more importance. Take software, for example. Unlike other phone makers, Motorola doesn't try to paint over Android 10 at all. Instead, they just carried forward classic actions like the chop to activate the flashlight or the double twist to activate the camera. Throw in a few features to take advantage of the edges on the screen and some customization options, and that's really about it. Motorola lets Android be Android, and I'm perfectly happy with that. Note that I'm talking about Motorola here. This phone is a Verizon exclusive, so it comes filled to the brim with bloatware that I could not delete or disable fast enough. I can confidently say the best thing about this phone is its battery life. The Edge Plus uses a 5,000 milliamp hour cell that in my experience is enough to last well over a full day on a single charge. And I'm talking a full day full of emails and Slack messages and YouTube videos and Telegram calls and Call of Duty mobile matches. On weekends, when I didn't do as much of that stuff because I'd try to live a life inside my apartment by myself, I got closer to two days of use off of a single charge. The caveat here is that the Edge Plus only supports fast charging at speeds up to 15 watts, and that's not quite as fast as other phones, but hey, you won't have to charge this thing as frequently anyway. So performance, great. Battery life, great. Software, great, once you get rid of all of Verizon's junk. Now, about that screen. Motorola's Endless Edge display is a 6.7 inch OLED panel that refreshes at 90 hertz, so on-screen motion is more smooth than what you'd see on a more basic smartphone. And despite running at Full HD+, instead of something more pixel dense, clarity here is simply not an issue. For the most part, this screen looks great. My only gripe is that when the screen's brightness is bottomed out, there is some noise and visual banding apparent if you're looking at dark images or backgrounds. The screen almost looks gritty, which we've noticed before in devices like LG's V30 and the Google Pixel 2 XL back in the day. As with those phones, that display weirdness doesn't actually affect day-to-day -day use at all. You have to be sitting in a dark room at the lowest possible screen brightness to notice it, but it's there and you should probably know about it. This is no ordinary screen though. The name Endless Edge refers to how the sides of the screen curve dramatically around the phone to the point where it's basically, it basically comes halfway down. It's pretty wild. Now I can see why Motorola went with a display like this. They're still fairly uncommon and they are nothing if not eye-catching. Here's an important question though. Does the Edge Plus actually benefit from using a screen like this? I'm not so sure. One of the arguments you'll occasionally see thrown around in favor of these screens is that they're immersive because there's less bezel around them. And that's certainly true in this case. But how about this though? When you're watching a video or playing a game that stretches into those edges, some of the on-screen action is going to point at least partially away from you by design. Now, granted, there might not be a ton of action that far away from the center of the screen, but still, that feels less than immersive to me. To Motorola's credit, they made it easy to disable the screen's edges entirely, which I have had to do with more than a few apps this week, just so I could reach icons and controls that normally would have veered away from me otherwise. Displays like this also have the potential to be really obnoxious. 
because this screen spillover is touch sensitive, I was always worried that accidental touches with the side of my hand would get the Edge Plus doing all sorts of things I did not want. Thankfully, that hardly ever happened. And I know, I'm shocked. Motorola fine-tuned the screen to ignore those glancing touches with pretty remarkable consistency. I wouldn't say it was 100%, but I could use the phone without having to worry about my hand placement, which is something I cannot say about the Galaxy S20 Ultra or the OnePlus 8 Pro. Now, I cannot guarantee that you will be as lucky. I do know people who have also been testing the phone and have experienced the exact opposite, that the edge rejection is lacking. I cannot stress this enough. This is really one of those phones that you need to go out and touch for yourself before you buy it. Now, accidental touches are one thing, but what about intentional ones? Motorola added a few features to make these big edges worth including, and for the most part, they're actually pretty helpful. Once you plow through the initial setup, you'll spot a little pill thing on the far left or right side of your screen. Double tap that and you can turn the edges of the display on and off entirely. And the apps that you disable the edges for will remember for next time. Flick it up and you can access the notification shade. Flick it down to see your recent apps. Motorola basically just took the home screen gestures you're probably already used to and mapped them to the side of the screen. So it's pretty easy to get to with one hand. You can also swipe in on the side of that screen to access a palette of six shortcuts, which is genuinely helpful. I have nothing bad to say about that. Now, beyond all of this, a new app called Moto Game Time allows for basic in-game options like silencing notifications, but also lets you put shoulder buttons on the edges of the display. It's a neat idea and one that comes in actually really handy for games like Asphalt 9 Legends and especially Call of Duty Mobile. I have mapped one shoulder button to aim and the other to fire and it's a huge improvement over just sort of blindly thumbing at the screen hoping I get the fire button because I'm not very good at this game. This endless edge display isn't just the visual focal point of this phone, it also defines how this phone feels. This is technically a 19 and a half by nine screen, but it's narrow and comfortable to grip because the edges reach nearly halfway around the sides of the phone. If you don't take those edges into account, the screen's aspect ratio is a more cinematic 21 by nine. That does also mean that you're gonna be holding the screen's glossy glass basically all the time. And it, it feels weird. It honestly takes a lot of getting used to. There also wasn't a whole lot of room around the sides for the power or volume buttons, so Motorola's solution was to make them very thin and very fiddly. Ultimately, this endless edge screen has me torn. It's nothing if not neat looking, and Motorola came up with ways to make its edges more than just eye candy, but I'm still not sold. I mean, nothing these edges do feels essential, and this phone would have been perfectly capable even with a more conventional screen. It probably wouldn't have cost as much either, which is something to think about. Now, obviously there's more to this phone than what I've mentioned so far. It doesn't have a IP rating for water or dust resistance, for example, which is very common in thousand dollar Android phones and is just missing here. Motorola says the Edge Plus has been treated with a water repellent nano coating, which basically just means it'll survive a run through the rain, but probably not a dip in the pool. Despite some outside help tuning the audio here, Listening to music without the headphones kind of sounds like listening to music in a bathroom. It's kind of hollow and toothless and unsatisfying. It's a little better for games and for movies, and that's great, but it's a really good thing that the Edge Plus has a headphone jack. And the cameras, well, they're mostly just all right compared to the competition. Thanks to this crazy big 108 megapixel sensor, the main camera was especially pleasant to shoot with. It captured some details that weren't as easy to spot in photos I took with the iPhone 11 Pro and the OnePlus 8 Pro. And because the sensor is so big, low light and night photos came out surprisingly well. There is a built-in night mode to help with color accuracy, but I didn't find I needed it most of the time. Like everything else about the Edge Plus though, these cameras have their quirks. For one, it sort of rattles when you move the phone around, which Motorola says is a function of ball bearings inside that it uses for stabilization, and that's fine, but the phone kind of rattles. It's a thousand dollar phone. Come on guys. Now with respect to the cameras themselves, the 108 megapixel main sensor tends to skew pretty warm as far as its colors go, and its HDR processing tends to feel kind of lacking. In almost every outdoor photo I took, the sky looked pretty drab compared to whatever was in the foreground. And really, that processing is everything. Apple and Google have proven that aging camera sensors can produce fantastic photos with the right intelligence behind them. 
Motorola's approach is kind of the exact opposite. It feels like a lot of brute force with very little underlying finesse. Because of that, the main camera ultimately produces good, not great images. And the same goes for the ultra wide and telephoto cameras. The former is a solid utility player that sometimes struggled to produce natural looking colors, even though there was a lot of ambient light that should have helped it out. And the latter, well, the latter is actually perfectly fine. Of the two situational cameras that we've got here, the telephoto camera is the one I use the most and the one that let me down the least. I wanted Motorola to knock it out of the park with the Edge Plus, but it's pretty clear that it has too many quirks for me to recommend wholeheartedly. I think Motorola's real issue here is that for whatever reason, it took four years off from making high-end, high-performance smartphones. Everyone else used that time to hone their approaches, to file down the rough edges, and just basically keep up with the best of the industry. It's no surprise then that the Edge Plus feels a little all over the place. Despite all that, Motorola did get some stuff right, like performance and battery life and software, which means the Edge Plus isn't a total write-off. It does have its charms. I can't guarantee it's right for you, but if you're a Verizon customer, it's definitely worth paying attention to at least. It's not perfect, but it's definitely fascinating. Oh, guys, I have never been so torn about a smartphone before. It's, it's been a while. On some days, I absolutely love this thing, and on other days, I just couldn't with it. <sighs> anyway, if you want more detail about the Motorola Edge Plus, please check out our full written review on Engadget.com. If you have any feedback, please leave some comments down below or send me an email via Engadget.com. Thank you so much for watching again and joining me in my living room. I hope you guys are doing super well. I hope you're happy, you're healthy, and you're safe. And we'll see you next time. Thank you.